A patent filling had been discovered by Let's Go Digital, a Dutch news outlet that Sony just filled recently, about thick Game Boy style cartridges. And suddenly the internet went nuts about the next PSP or the PlayStation Portable, and Sony is willing to compete with Nintendo Switch. So before jumping to the cartridges and the rumor and the patent, let's recall back again what Sony did with the PSP and the PS Vita. Well, with the PSP, the portable gaming was flourished at that time, before the arrival of the smartphones. But there come the PS Vita and it didn't meet the same success as the PSP. Also, Nintendo struggled a little bit with the 3DS at the beginning, but it took off after the price reduction. But it didn't meet the same success as the Game Boy Advance or the Game Boy Advance SP or even the original DS. So this case here is that releasing a dedicated portable gaming device is not very ideal anymore. Because see, each company have to support a home console and a portable or handheld device. So two platform, two format, and two softwares, which make things very hard to maintain. Look for example, Sony is very successful with PS4, but it's not very successful with the PS Vita. Wii U was a failure, but when you compare to the 3DS and the new 3DS, those handhelds were successful. So maintaining both platforms are very hard. And one solution was for Nintendo is to merge them with the hybrid system. And that system is Switch. It can go portable and it can be a console. So Nintendo just combined two devices in one. Game and software development and formats maintaining became one and the work has been cut into half. But how can Sony approach the same concept as well? Because believe me, if Sony released another PSP or PS Vita 2, it will be a failure again because nobody is willing to buy a dedicated handheld device if it will be supported for one or two or three years with software then developers will be opt out from this platform because it's not very successful or they have to pour more resources into the development of this new platform. So what I think Sony have to do in this case is to unify the hardware between PS5 and the next PlayStation Portable. So PS5 is using a desktop class CPU. The new PSP will have to use the same CPU architecture. And why I'm stating that they need to unify the hardware is because the software development will be done once for the PS5 and hardware optimization will be made for the new PSP. They don't have to port it to another platform that uses a different hardware. And this will make developer life much easier because they just have to code once for PS5 and the same code will be able to run on the new PSP. If you need an easier example, let me say, those new cartridges able to be run on the new PS5, then the PS5 will have to be natively running them at full speed or at full power. And the same thing will goes with the new PSP as well, that uses the same cartridges. Or here another example. Just imagine you are playing a game on your beefy big desktop with the latest CPU and GPU. Well, you take this game, this code, this software will be able to run on that low-end laptop. And customers or gamers will have the choice. They either buy the new PS5 or they buy the new PSP. They support the same software, but they are totally different hardware. And of course, they give you a different quality. So again, in order for Sony to success in the portable gaming, they don't have to provide the beefy or strong hardware on the go. They need to unify the hardware, so the development and the software will be unified and more developer will automatically support the new PSP. And if you look at, again at the cartridges, Sony might not be releasing a new PSP. They might release a device that is similar to the PS TV. They might redesign or refresh the PS4 with a smaller footprint device that uses CDs and cartridges as well. Well, the possibilities are a lot in this case. So anyway guys, what do you think about this PSP controversy and those new cartridges that Sony had just patented recently?